Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online series 10 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. Today we are using a really fun team featuring Scyther, built by 2017 world champion Ryota Otsubo. Ryota has been one of my favorite team builders in Sword and Shield, and I think I've used probably over 10 of his teams at this point for Road to Rank, so please go check him out. I've linked him in the description below. He has a Twitter as well as a YouTube channel, and truly just one of my favorite players and team builders. And yeah, he's come up with a really interesting Kyogre team. Now, the Pokemon on this team look relatively standard, but you've got some pretty sneaky tricks up its sleeve. And of course, we have to start with the Scyther. So first of all, you might be wondering, well, why in the world would you ever use Scyther? Well, first of all, it's actually decently bulky with Eviolite, and with Technician, you actually do pretty good damage. Uh, Scyther, of course, is Bug and Flying, which is a pretty unique typing. Uh, generally, it's not the best typing, but with Eviolite, you can survive some super effective hits. And Scyther is also decently fast, right? You actually outspeed Urshifu, which is a really, really big speed tiered outspeed, and Dual Wingbeat can actually just one-shot Urshifu. In addition to one-shotting Urshifu, you can also one-shot other Pokemon, for example, Rillaboom and uh, Amoongus potentially, depending on the spread as well. But being able to one-shot Rillaboom is a really big deal, right? Because Rillaboom is just probably one of the toughest Pokemon for Kyogre to go up against, and you're going to go up against Rillaboom very, very frequently. It's on the majority of teams in the format. So, Scyther has good damage, and it also gets access to both Faint and Quick Guard. Now, Faint is one of those moves that I think a lot of people often just kind of forget about, uh, and especially when you go up against something like a Scyther, right? You're probably just wondering, what in the world is it going to do? If you haven't seen it before, uh, you might just be left guessing as to what its moveset is, right? So Faint is really nice for two reasons. One, obviously you can break through Protect and, you know, just get a little bit of chip damage while also allowing the partner Pokemon for Scyther to just, you know, actually hit that slot. And two, this team specifically has Endeavor on Whimsicott. Now, Endeavor will bring you down to however much HP the Whimsicott has, and with Focus Sash, a lot of the times you'll actually get down to that 1 HP and be able to Endeavor in subsequent turns. What does this mean? It means that you can potentially, if the Sash gets activated, bring a Restricted Pokemon, or really any Pokemon, down to 1 HP, and then bring in Scyther later on in the game and just go for Faint to pick up that final 1 HP of damage, or however much, you know, if Whimsicott is low, for example. So Faint already has utility even without Whimsicott, but with Endeavor, it combos really nicely. Now, I have to say that in playing with this team, I practiced a bunch, and that combo doesn't actually get to happen very frequently because it does take some, you know, you have to position well with it, right? You're basically like, have Scyther in the back, you have Whimsicott out there, and then Whimsicott has to be at 1 HP as well. Uh, so it's not like you can just go for it every game, but there are scenarios where that can pop up and it can be absolutely huge. So yeah, that's it for Scyther. Quick Guard is also just valuable because of course, there's a lot of fake out in the format, and more importantly, it protects you from Grassy Glide from Rillaboom for Kyogre if Grassy Terrain is up, which is really critical. Uh, Insane Landers here are really standard. Wimscott standard other than the Endeavor. Uh, it also has Helping Hand actually, so no Protect, no Encore, no Taunt. Uh, the Helping Hand's nice because it helps against, no pun intended, when players try to fake out Whimsicott. Uh, in addition, there are often scenarios where you, like, you'll get Tailwind up and then Kyogre just comes out. Note that this is an Assault Vest Kyogre. It's not, you know, Sea Incense, it's not Mystic Water, it's not Choice Specs. Uh, so as a result, you'll do a little bit less damage, but as a, the Helping Hand can really basically just maximize that output, right? Uh, and so Helping Hand's pretty nice here. Uh, with the Rillaboom, note that there is Protect and Rose Incense because the AB is committed on Kyogre. Uh, so you do increased damage with Grassy Glide, and it's actually really nice because that extra little bit of damage can help a lot against Pokemon like Aleki, for example, which otherwise, otherwise give Kyogre a lot of trouble, especially if Aleki isn't Focus Sash, for example. Uh, and then finally, you've got Assault Vest Kyogre. AB Kyogre is pretty interesting. It's not exactly the most common item. At this point, we've used Scarf, we've used Specs, we've used Mystic Water slash uh, Sea Incense. Uh, and so AB here is like, you know, another viable item on Kyogre. And the main value of AB is that you take attacks pretty well, right? You think about the most common restricted, well, three or four special attackers in Kyogre, Xerneas, and the Calyrex Shadow Rider. Uh, so with AB, you can take hits from them a lot easier, and they often will need two, if not three, attacks to KO Kyogre, right? Uh, as a result, you can retaliate back, you can tank attacks a little bit better while still, in, uh, still doing large amounts of damage, uh, and also gives you room for a fourth attack. So a lot of Kyogres in the format currently don't run Thunder. You know, you want to run Water Spout, Origin Pulse, slash Scald, Ice Beam, and then Protect. Uh, but with the Navy variant, we can fit Thunder onto it, which is sweet. Uh, and Thunder is really helpful against opposing Kyogre matchups, because you could just go Whimsicott Kyogre and like Helping Hand Thunder into opposing Kyogres, for example. So, yeah. That's it for the breakdown for this team. Scyther is not really going to carry you in any games, right? It's never going to demolish your opponent's team, but the main thing is using it as a utility support Pokemon that also can actually one-hit KO a couple of the things that threaten Kyogre. Uh, Quick Guard and Faint are also just nice utility attacks. You know, of course, Mianshou gets access to those as well, but the main value in Scyther is uh, beating a lot of those Pokemon that otherwise give Kyogre trouble, like uh, Rillaboom, for example. So, 
Thanks to Riota for the team. Thanks to you all as always for watching. If you enjoyed, please share your support by leaving a like. I'd really appreciate it. And question of the day, with us using Scyther, I want to know what's one non-fully evolved Pokemon you'd want to buff, uh, whether it be just giving it better moves or a uh, new stat distribution. Let me know in the comment section below, and let's get started. All right. First game of the day, and it's a Zacian team with Porygon. Porygon's pretty interesting here. Um, okay. They have their own Tailwind with Suicune. Scyther is pretty good into the Urshifu as well as the Rillaboom. What do I want to go with? So this is one of those games where like all of our Pokemon are good, so I don't know who to really drop. I, if I'm my opponent, I would prioritize bringing that Suicune out on there, and honestly, I'm thinking just something like Rillaboom Suicune, because, like, I can potentially uh, KO Suicune relatively easily with this duo, and then, like, Scyther and then Incid in the back. I think I generally like this. It just feels weird to not bring Whimsicott or Landorus. If they don't have Suicune, I think I'm always going with Tailwind in this game, but because they have Suicune and they have Porygon, I can't get away with Tailwind as easily. And it's like, if I set up Tailwind and they have Tailwind up with Suicune, well, I'm bringing Whimsicott to just match their Tailwind. Now, I guess one thing I didn't mention is that Whimsicott here has Endeavor, right? So, you'd actually make a pretty good argument for Whimsicott solely for Endeavor, because it can just bring these really beefy Pokemon like Suicune and Zacian down to 1 HP, should I get brought down to my Sash. But, they also have a decent amount of priority on their team, and decent amount of ways to break the Sash before you bring me down. So, yeah. It's gonna be Incineroar plus Zacian here. I generally don't mind this, because turn 1, it's a relatively free fake-out into Incineroar and an Origin Pulse. If you're my opponent, you have to... A lot of Kyogre combos that you have to respect here. I could see them switching out the Incineroar. The question is on turn 1, then, yeah, are you willing to trade... Oh, wait, they're faster. Uh-oh. Wait, that changes everything, actually. They're faster, though. I don't think you can take an Origin Pulse. So, like, here I'm going to Fake Out Zacian. If we trade Fake Outs, that's fine. The next turn, I can just switch into my Incineroar and Origin Pulse. I could also switch out this turn, but since we both have Fake Out Pressure right now, I'd rather both of us just, like, you know, blow our Fake Outs. So, Scyther in, a, in the back that I brought right now isn't very good against the two uh, Pokemon out on the field, but it's quite good against a lot of the remaining Pokemon. Urshifu, Rillaboom... Even Suicune, it's nice, because I can just, like, U-turn. Okay, so they're going to Fake Out Kyogre. Yeah, so we'll just trade Fake Outs turn 1. Honestly, pretty good damage, though, so I don't love seeing that. Okay. Uh, this next turn, it's pretty easy for me to just switch Rillaboom out into Incineroar and then Origin Pulse. Uh, they now know that I am not Choice Scarfed, so they get some good information reveal there. But I think going out into Incineroar and just clicking Origin Pulse here is generally fine. I could see them protecting Zacian and then switching Incineroar out into Suicune. Now, if they make that play, though, the next turn I can just fake out the Zacian slot and Origin Pulse. It. The key thing here is just trying to cycle attack drops, whether it be through Intimidate or Parting Shot. Um, so this next turn is pretty easy or safe for me to play out. Okay, they're actually going to just hard switch immediately probably into Suicune, if I had to guess. Oh, no, they go into Rillaboom. Okay, I don't mind that too much. Now, I expect to protect, right? But this is generally fine. Because I've cycled an Intimidate onto both of these physical attackers right now. It also makes me wonder what their last Pokemon is. Because I feel like if you had Suicune out, that was a good opportunity to bring it out. Okay, so yeah, Zacian goes for Protect. It's fine. Uh, we'll get some chip damage on Rillaboom. I'm going to assume they're Assault Vested here. Okay. Oh, they're not AP? Ah, that was just a crit. Okay. Um... Hmm. Well, Rillaboom's obviously going to have a faster fake out here, right? So, like, you could just easily fake out. Or you could just say, like, go for Woodhammer or Grassy Glide here into Kyogre as well. Now, if I'm my opponent, I'm actually contemplating switching out the Zacian. It's just in an awkward spot. So, honestly, here, I, I think I'm down to just Flare Blitz. And then switch out into Scyther. Uh, before I do that, let's think it through, though. Rillaboom could just click Fake Out here, and then Zacian could just attack. That's another possibility. I don't know. If we can Flare Blitz and knock out Rillaboom, though, that's a really good turn for us. So I'm down for this. Especially because my Incident isn't at risk of getting knocked out right now. Like, that was obviously a pretty lucky critical hit, so I'm going to take advantage of it right now. 
I could have also gone party shot onto Lazashi and slot. Looks like they're gonna stay in, uh, but truthfully, I was expecting a switch there. They do go for fake out onto the Kyogre slot, so that's good. Uh, and then just Sacred Sword, okay. 202 down to 64. So we wanna keep that damage range in mind. That did, what, 138 damage? We're at 114 right now, so we're not surviving after... We're already not surviving even after Grassy Terrain. Okay, we don't knock out the Rillaboom, but that's okay because Faint will pick up the KO now. Okay. So, I'm going to Faint into Scyther, or in into that slot, and then... What's... I mainly brought my Rillaboom out for what? Their... Suicune. So, Rillaboom isn't that important right now, so I'm down to just go into my Rillaboom and then just go for a Faint. Um to try to pick up the knockout onto the Rillaboom. I guess I also could have just sacrificed my Ensign here because then I get the knockout onto the most important Pokemon. If you bring an Ensign, then I can just Quick Guard Water Spell or Quick Guard Origin Pulse. Cool, they actually have Protect. Oh, so it's, it's not a self Vested. Yeah, okay. It was just like, uh, yeah, I mean, with AV, I, they would take it even better, but this is the awesome thing about having Faint on Scyther. So we get a free knockout there, fantastic. And they go for another Sacred Sword, okay, good. Nice, and that's not much damage. Okay, cool. That was a great turn. Um, Scyther has already provided us pretty good value. And once again, one of the main reasons you want to use Scyther on this team is because it's a really effective answer into Rillaboom specifically. But this is what I mean, right? Because they had instant here, like it actually may have been worth it for me to just have sacrificed a Pokemon. Um, we know their instant's faster than my Rillaboom. I'm down to just click Fake Out right now onto Zacian. I feel like Zacian's probably compelled to switch out right now, but like, I feel okay going for Fake Out onto Zacian. Ah, uh, the thing is like, when I really want to switch Scyther into Kyogre, it's fairly predictable here. So actually instead, I like U-Turning here because it gives me a free switch in. Okay, they're gonna f click Fake Out. Okay, so we're gonna trade Fake Outs here, that's fine. But it means I could have switched into Kyogre, right? But I didn't want them to Fake Out into Lorillaboom and then put us in a weird spot. Rain stops now. So Flare Blitz will do more damage on both ends. I can obviously switch in Incineroar right now. I'm really looking for a U-turn. Uh, you know what could have worked last? No, I was gonna say Quick Guard U-turn, but I don't know if I love that. Terrain also disappears. I think I'm down to switch my Rillaboom out into Incin here. Uh, and then go for a U-turn here onto... I think it's better to just to target Zacian because I think their instance fainting from an origin pulse anyway. So chip damage doesn't really matter when we have something like can just KO it immediately. Uh, that last turn, if I just put, uh, switched out Kyogre, I guess then the rain wouldn't be up, right? And that'd actually be kind of weird. So I'm okay timing it the way we did. What's interesting is that they're not switching out their Zacian despite it already being intimidated and now being intimidated twice. But the thing is, if I can get this turn right, I, I think their instant should parting shot here. Okay, they go for Behemoth Blade, that's fine. Scyther would be able to survive this. And they target the Rillaboom slot, perfect. Okay, amazing. That's great. The only question here though is, do I actually go out into Kyogre? Because their Incineroar going for a parting shot here is fairly likely, but I think the answer is still yes. Because even at minus one, Kyogre is doing pretty good damage right now. We're in a spot where at, we're at full HP, and I have fake out pressure with my Incin this next turn. So like, even if they parting shot, I can just fake out Water Spout, whatever's coming in. And I think two minus one Water Spouts can still two it KO uh, most of the remaining Pokemon in the back. But they just offer Flare Bloods. Okay, that could not have played out any better for us. I actually doubled up into the Rilla slot. Perfect. Okay, I think we're in just an amazing position now because they're only resist to Water Spout in the back. Like, like you would think Zacian switches out here, right? Um, yeah, I'm honestly willing to just parting shot here and then Water Spout. I guess they could stay in and go for like a minus one play rough onto Kyogre. That does hurt a little bit, but... I mean, the safer play for me was to click Fake Out here, but I think if I'm in my opponent's shoes, I'd always switch out the Zacian. Because, like, you're already at minus one attack, and you would probably expect Fake Out and Water Spout this turn. So it's like, we're already ahead in this game. But, okay, nice, nicely done on their end. They don't go for it. But, yeah, Play Rough actually just doesn't really do much there, so I'm fine with that outcome. Okay, we got Water Spout off. Instant actually hangs on with the Sliver. That's okay, although Flare Blitz onto Zacian here would have been better for me to go for. But it's like, yeah, you get the damage off on a Kyogre, but... 
is it really worth it, right? And now it's still awkward from my opponent where it's like, now do you consider switching out the Zashi in this turn? Because you're at minus two, so you're really not dealing any damage. Um, and the big question I have is, what is their last Pokemon? Because the other thing is, I can bring in the Scyther, and with Scyther, I can click Faint. Or I can just bring out Rillaboom. Um, what are their remaining Pokemon? It was Urshifu, Porygon, and Suicune. None of those resist Grass. So I like going into Rillaboom the most here. Uh, and with Rillaboom out, I think I can just click Grassy Glide onto the Zacian slot. I don't think it KOs, but that's fine. Scyther would have been fun to bring out here, but I think Rillaboom is a little bit more consistent. Also gives my Kyogre a little bit of recovery, which is nice. Um, that was a good play by them last turn, though, right? Because if I just went Fake Out Water Spout, the game's over. So they read into my play. Uh, and they gave themselves an out by look, like having a potential critical hit as well, which was well done on their end. But truthfully, I think I can just go for Grassy Glide here. I don't want to miss uh, Origin Pulse, so I'm down to just Water Spout. Like, a play rough at this point is it's, it's a minus two Zashi, and you really don't deal enough damage. So, and like, all we need is, you know, the smallest amount of HP to KO the Incineroar. So they make another good play, right? Once again, they continue to not switch out, but Zashian's so low now. So they're going for the crit play rough onto Kyogre, and they don't get it. So Water Spout should be a double knockout from this range. Perfect. Cool. Yeah, like, Scyther being able to just faint to knock out that Rillaboom early on was really, really nice. And like I mentioned in, you know, covering the team, it's not, Scyther is never going to carry a game, right? But it can basically be very helpful against Rillaboom, which is on, like, the majority of teams in this format. So, uh, the main thing here is my opponent never switched out the Zacian, but we put themselves in positions where they never had a safe opportunity to, right? That's why I was going for the Parting Shot on Grassy Glides. It was, like, even in the worst, well, the worst ghost would actually be bad. It would be them critting play rough, but... I was willing to deal with the potential crit chance in this position, so, yeah. Okay, their last one's Porygon, no problem. They're gonna get an attack boost, also no problem here. Uh, I can just U-turn so I can cycle Fake Out, and then just go for Origin Pulse. I mean, Porygon's never winning a 4v1 in this position. <laughs> we do miss Origin Pulse, though, so... Maybe I should have Ice Beamed instead. Uh, they're gonna T-Bolt, but with the Salt Vest, we survived that. Pretty fast Porygon, though. It actually helped spend my Rillaboom. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, uh, it is a little bit more consistent to just go for Ice Beam or Thunder there, just because we have all of our Pokemon. Now I can just go out into Incineroar, quick fake out. Uh, yeah, I just might take another turn or two right now, because <laughs> we missed. Uh, but with Grassy Terrain, like, we're, we're gonna heal another turn of Grassy Terrain with the Salt Vest. I don't even think he KO after, even if we... I'm just gonna go for Thunder... I'm oh, sorry, Origin Pulse again here. Mainly because Porygon has Recover. I don't... I really don't think, like, Ice Beam or T-Bolt does enough damage anyway, whereas, like, Origin Pulse should be a 2 to KO. So, yeah. And we also have Rillaboom with the Rose Incense, so Grassy Glide in the late game will deal large amounts of damage, too. So, we'll see how much single target Origin Pulse here does. I would think maybe it's actually enough where Thunder can KO the Porygon the next turn. Actually, kind of close. Oh, I did forget about the rain stopping too. <laughs> okay, this is dragging on a little bit longer. Uh, I mean, Porygon's play here is to recover, honestly, uh, which is not exactly super fun. So. Yeah, it's actually gonna take a little bit of time here. Like, I'm gonna parting shot go into Rillaboom because their play is to recover. So. Uh, by doing this, I get to recycle the rain, and then I can fake out, uh, and then probably just thunder. Thunder, thunder, grassy glide. Oh, they just go for T-Bolt. Okay, cool. Yeah, so then the game's just over. Valiant effort by Real uh, Porygon, but <laughs> it does get the paralysis. Okay, I mean, your win con now is I, uh, get fully parried, and I miss Origin Pulse. I'm just not going for Thunder or Ice Beam here because Porygon has Recover, so it can heal all of it off anyway. But, like, Porygon's never dealing enough damage to all of my Pokemon quickly enough here. But I can see why they're playing it out, right? Let's see. There's the slightest win condition in which I just, like, miss everything. Yeah. <laughs> and if you ever think there's even a, you know, 0.0001% chance of winning the game, yeah, you go for it, right? I think both Glide and Origin Pulse... <sighs> I forgot the rain expires. <laughs> uh, Alright, well, I'm just gonna fake out that instead of gliding. It's same outcome, it's like, need to hit one of two origin pulses. Okay, they finally forfeit. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I just don't think Porygon was ever dealing enough damage there, but it makes sense to, like, at least try and play it out for a little longer and see what happens, especially when I'm relying on hitting Origin Pulse there, but... Of course, could have gone for my 100% accurate attacks. I kind of just wanted to end the game a little bit quicker, and that was one of those scenarios where it's like, even if I go for Ice Beam and Thunder, uh, all it takes is one recover from Porygon. I can heal back all this damage, so it's like Origin Pulse just does a substantially larger chunk. So, yeah. Uh, let's just get into the second game here. Let's see what they got. Okay... Scyther was pretty cool in that last one. Um, I'd really love to get some stuff off with Endeavor into Scyther, but it's easier said than done. This is Zacian with Rain. This does not look like a good match. I mean, Kyogre is going to have a terrible time here. Like, they have Aleki, they have Moody. If I'm my opponent, I would go Aleki, Ludi, Zacian, Grim. You can bring Pelipper too, obviously, but... Um, well, this is where Scyther has some value into the Aleki, but like, sorry, into the Rillaboom, but Aleki probably has Thunder, which is concerning. I honestly kind of want to go Rillaboom Scyther here. I mean, Kyogre is just really subpar here, which makes me sad to say. And then I, I think it's just Kyogre Instant. It's so hard not to bring Landris into a matchup with Zacian, but we're doing it twice in a row, and like in this one... In the last team preview, they had Suicune. In this team preview, they have Pelipper and Ludicolo. And, like, even if I bring Whimsicott and set up Tailwind, like, their Pelipper can also set up Tailwind. So, yeah. Ideally, we use Scyther to knock out the uh, Ludi early on. But the problem is that I have... I'm staring down a Ludi and an Aleki in this matchup, and both of those are rough for Kyogre. So, yeah, I think on paper, they just have a very nice anti... It's not just an anti-Kyogre team, but their team definitely has really good Kyogre answers. They're gonna go with Zashin and Ludicolo, okay. I actually generally don't mind that very much. Um, I say that, but like... Leaning towards... Ludi should outspeed me, right? Yeah, I'm 105. Ludi should definitely outspeed me. But not the Scyther. If I were my opponent, I would probably just fake out Scyther and then Behemoth Blade it as well, maybe. Like, I want to go for dual wing beat onto Ludi here and then just fake out into the Zacian, but I don't think we'd ever get it off. Yeah, so they're going to fake out. Okay, they target Rillaboom. Does Scyther survive a plus one, or plus one blade? They might have also doubled up on a Rillaboom. Nope, it's not a Scyther. Let's go. Okay, does Dual Wing be hit here? Please don't miss. Nice. All right, I'll take that trade any day. That's actually really good. That's awesome. Like, I just eliminated one of the main threats to my... To my Kyogre, right? And I still have Instant in the back. So here's the thing. Like, let's say they... No, you're not going to bring out Leki, right? You'd probably bring out Pelipper. If I were my opponent's use, I would. If you bring out Pelipper, though, I can glide and faint. Oh, it's Landorus. Okay, that is not what I was expecting. Surely Aleki's their last one. Uh, double up onto Rillaboom feels likely. <sighs> I need to get Kyogre in safely right now, right? Um, I don't mind going for Dual Wingby. I think, like, we're basically toast with that anyway. And I think I'm going to just switch into Instant. Now, the risk is, like, they could easily Earth Power Behemoth Blade the Rillaboom slot. The other play I was thinking was just Grassy Glide and Dual Wing Beat Landorus and, like, punish them if they double up into that slot. Because the Instant switch in here is really super duper obvious. But the thing is, you could also see Scyther switching into Instant. So let's see if they made the right read here. All right. They start off with the Sacred Sword, so that's already a good turn for them. Okay, but if you Sacred Sword and Earth Power, it's actually not that bad, because then I get Kyogre in safely, and I got an Intimidate onto your... Oh, wait. We're faster than Landris. I was not expecting that. Okay. Well, that's good. I get a free dual wing beat off, and they do just end up sludge bombing. Okay, they doubled up into that slot. Yep. Hmm. Now, in this position, like, it's so easy for me to just click Fake Out into Zashi and dual wing beat into Landris. So if I'm my opponent, I would protect the Landorus and then switch out Zacian. Or protect Lan Landorus and just try to attack here. What is their last Pokemon going to be? I would think it's a Leki. 
the play I want to make here is a little bit risky. Like, I'm thinking dual wing beat and flare blitz Zacian, because I would protect Landers and maybe even switch Zacian out, but maybe it's okay to just play it safe this turn. Mm. I don't know how I feel about this play. I switched in Kyogre here. They're staying in with Zacian, okay. Well, at least I'm glad I clicked Fake out there. Because the problem here is... Well, no, nah, I mean, Kyogre really won't take that much from a Sludge Bomb if Landris goes for it. Okay, they switched Landris out. I'm fine with that. That's cool with me. Into Pelipper. Okay, great. Because I have Thunder for Pelipper right now. Cool, and they don't protect the Zacian, so I just denied and attack this turn. Great. Uh, now one of my questions is the item on the Pelipper here. Does Zacian stay in here? Because you, you're only in neutral right now. You could just Sacred Sword this, so I, I want to switch in Scythe there right now, because I think it's done pretty much everything I've needed it to. And I and go for a Thunder onto Pelipper. The reason I feel compelled to Thunder on Pelipper is because I want to break the... Uh, like, uh, Pelipper is often have Wide Guard, right? And so that's kind of annoying, um, because it means I can't go for either of my Water-type attacks into Zacian. Okay, they just commit Play Rough here, but... Uh, Oh, it's a oh, very well. Oh, man. Who's still one shot? That wasn't even a crit. Wow. That's beautiful. Okay, nice. That's huge. Um, That is absolutely huge. So, let's think this through. We're up 4 2. We know Scyther outspeeds their Landorus, but obviously Zacian outspeeds Scyther. However, I'm a Salt Vested on Kyogre, so I should be able to take an Origin Pulse right now. Uh, sorry, an Earth, Earth Power. So the play I'm leaning towards here is just going for an Origin Pulse and a Dual Wing Beat onto the Landorus slot. Scyther, I did not think Scyther would outspeed Landorus, but their Landorus is just not max speed. I actually have to double check Scyther's space speed. I, I truthfully don't remember it. Okay, they just Sacred Sword. The Scyther expecting an instant switch in, that's fine. Scyther's done everything I've needed it to do in this game. And they just Sludge Bomb. Also covering for a Rillaboom switch in, but we have Assault Vest. Oh, man. Okay. It's a bulky Zacian, too. Oh, I could have Ice Beam the Landorus slot there, but there was a chance Landorus would protect there, so I didn't feel amazing about that. Okay, but our Rillaboom is fully healthy. So I think it's still fine. Because um, at this point, I can just launch two Grassy Glides onto the Landorus slot and then switch Kyogre out into Incineroar right now. But I'm at the mercy of getting crit. What is Scyther's speed here? 172. Is it base 105? <laughs> Honestly, completely forgot. I thought it was like 100. Um, okay, Kyogre out into Insin, and then just Grassy Glide into Landorus, I think. The alternative play is the fake out Zacian Origin Pulse here, but I think that's the obvious play for me to make, so... I honestly see them protecting Zacian and Earth Powering here, but like, even if they protect with Landorus, it's fine, right? I can just fake out the Zacian Grassy Glide Landorus next turn. Being able to cycle the Intimidates and fake outs right now is what really gives us an advantage. Okay, so they do make the correct play. Kudos to them. That's not an easy play to make. Um, but I'm okay with that. That's fine. The only problem is if they actually end up critting us here. Okay. They do go for play rough, though. Onto the instant slot. Beautiful. And we survive. Okay, amazing. That should put us in a really commanding spot. Uh, but I, I'm still playing around a potential crit, I think, which is scary. Just double check the field state. Last turn of rain, four turns of grassy terrain. So we're just going to fake out Zacian here, get the knockout onto the Landorus slot. And then at this point, Kyogre certainly can take a play rough from Zacian. It's just, I, I might not go for Origin Pulse. I might go for Thunder instead. Like, uh, I, I think the main thing in using this team is I end up clicking Origin Pulse a lot more than Water Spout, because with Water Spout, you really need to get the proper speed control. Okay, so they don't go for a double protect, which is nice, so they'll give me the knockout onto Landorus. Okay, perfect. That's great. Everyone heals back a little bit. Rain stops. Great. 
The key thing we also wanted to do in this game was time our terrain and our weather. Um, so we were able to reset both, which is nice. Uh, I could consider switching in sooner or out right now, but I don't see too much incentive for that, I think. Three turns of terrain. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm down to just Flare Blitz here. Like, the question is whether or not I should U-turn, because it gives me... No, I, I think I just like Glide here, because we just want to maximize our damage output. Zacian is decently bulky, though. That's the only scary thing, but that's good damage from Glide. They just Sacred Sword into Instant, yeah. I, of course, could have switched Instant out into Kyogre there, but... I don't know. Like, I could see them play Roughing there, right? And the thing is, now I'm in a position... Oh, yeah. I, I'm in a position now where... Um, you need a critical hit to knock out Kyogre right now. I'm not even going to bother clicking the Origin Pulse. I'm going to Thunder instead. Just because Grassy... We still have two turns of Grassy Terrain, so we'll get one big Glide off, and then Thunder should be enough as well. Although it does look really specially defensive, truthfully, but I just don't want to deal with the miss right now. I really don't. Like, that earlier miss was already frustrating enough as was. Okay, so they protect here. That always makes sense, but you do give me a turn of Grassy Terrain recovery on the Kyogre, which is nice. These games have been intense today. I've not expected them to go for as long as they have, but either way, these were good games. I just don't know about Thunder actually KOing now. That's my problem. Last from a grassy terrain. They're at minus one. I think we, we should survive a player off here. Okay, here's Grassy Glide. Really think Thunder gets it. We go for player off. Okay, we survive. Nice. This should put us in a position now where it's like you can protect Zacian, but uh, at minus one, they do survive. Wow. Oh my goodness, this is so stressful. <laughs> the thing is, Thunder there also gave me a para chance, right? So it's like if we get the para, yeah. With with Grassy Terrain disappearing now, like. I think Glide should still pick up the knockout, and even if it doesn't, uh, Zacian's so strong, but the main thing is, thankfully, he doesn't get access to spread attacks, so... I guess you could protect your style to turn a turn uh, rain, but... Yeah, there's gonna be heat with Blade. Uh, Blade is interesting. Are you targeting Rillaboom here, then, or just going to Kyogre? Oh, uh, yeah. I was gonna say Kyogre makes sense, you don't risk a miss, but yeah, they don't get the crit there. Okay, good. Yeah, that's, that's the main scary thing about playing with this team, is if you don't get Tailwind up, you have to rely on Origin Pulse more often than Water Spout, uh, or you have to make good reads um, and go for Water Spout in potentially risky positions. It's not like some of the other Torn Ogre teams or just Kyogre teams we featured, where the idea is you have really speedy Kyogre. I mean, this Kyogre is modest max, so it's not that crazy. Um, I also just want to quickly double-check Scyther's base speed, so I, I was super curious about that. Let's see. So Scyther... I thought it was 100, but I think it might actually be 105. Uh, it is... It is 105. So, yeah, it, it actually always outspeeds Landris. I forgot we were max speed here, and I also thought we were 100. So, I shouldn't have been uh, surprised that it outsped Landris. Uh, that was pretty neat as well. So, cool. Alright, let's look for one final one. Alright, final game of the day, and it's against a top 100 ranked opponent with Eternatus. Okay, they have Ditto as well. Ditto's really scary. I mean, AV Kyogre is actually really good into Eternatus here. So that's good. Ah, the problem is all three of these games we ran into, like... Act, it, it, the, the last game I'm thinking, do they have Tailwind? Or a potential Tailwind? Because the issue is with all of these, it's like, oh yeah, normally I would just bring Whimsicott Tailwind and then go from there, but in all of these, they have their own Tailwind user. Now, in game one, they didn't even bring the Tailwind user in Suicune out, because probably because of the Rillaboom and the Kyogre. Although, Sweeping's not bad into Kyogre with Snarl. In this game, I'm actually thinking Scyther Kyogre. Mainly because Scyther can Quick Guard. I could also go Scyther Whimsicott. But Scyther Kyogre Rillaboom Landris is pretty intriguing to me here. I could drop something for Whimsicott, but I'm gonna go with all three, of, uh, all four of these, and we'll see how it plays out. I just, like, yeah, running into Suicune in multiple of these matches makes it a lot harder for me to bring Tailwind Whimsicott. Especially because I don't even have Encore, but once again, like, I think often my opponents are actually dissuaded from bringing the Suicune because they're nervous about the Rillaboom and potential Taunt or Encore from Whimsicott, so, yeah. <laughs> 
A lot of mind games just in Team Preview, which is always entertaining. There, there's the Suicune this time around. I leave with the Eternatus as well. Uh, I don't even know if a Dual Wing Beat and a Thunder Knockout Suicune here, but the thing is, I could just double up onto Eternatus in turn one. They could protect Eternatus though, right? I've got Rillaboom and Landris in the back. Rillaboom obviously will handle this really well. I almost want to faint the Eternatus on turn one. It could be Power of Meteor Beam as well. Oh, that would actually completely demolish poor Scyther. Oh, actually, Power of Meteor Beam is a disaster for us to run into here. They probably know we have faint too. Is it going to be Power of Meteor Beam? That's basically the question, because I think we can survive any other attack. I think I'm gonna assume it is and just go for the faint and ice beam. It's like, even if they're not, it's fine. We get some damage onto Eternatus. They don't protect, that's fine. Cause I don't think ice beam KOs though, that's a problem. Okay, they just go for Dynamax Cannon. Could be worse. If it's going to Kyogre, that's great, right? Cause it may be... Yeah, they target Scyther. So I could have gone for Dual Wing Beat into um, Ice Beam and that actually probably would've just knocked out Eternatus and set, up, set us up for a really good start to the game. And they Tailwind. It's still not that bad, though, because now I can go for the same play. So what's their switching into that? Urshifu? I honestly don't mind going for faint. I, like, I, I would think Eternatus switches out here, right? So then it's like, what would you go into? You can go into Ditto? If I had my opponent, what would I bring? I'd have Rillaboom and Ditto. In the I wouldn't bring Instant, that's for sure. It's like, faint Ice Beam works here. Now, I could always switch Scyther out into Rillaboom here, but... Yeah, I'm honestly down for Faint and Ice Beam here. It's just a shame, because I could have gone for Dual Wing Beat last turn. Oh, they're going to give up Eternatus. Okay. Cool. But you know what the issue is here? They have Rillaboom in the back, so they can just bring Rillaboom out now. Well, even if I knocked out Eternatus on turn 1, I still would have taken this big Dynamax Cannon, so... Snarl's fine. I think the issue is I brought Landorus, and I brought Landorus to deal with Eternatus, but it kind of stinks against Suicune. So, like, I do get the knockout onto Eternatus. But they're probably going to bring Rillaboom out, and I, I gave up Scyther, which is my best Rillaboom answer, which is part of the problem right now. But, you know, at least I have my own Rillaboom. They should bring out theirs. Yeah. Hmm. Um. What is our out here? Also, is Sweet or is Ditto their last one? Ditto or Urshifu is their last. Both make sense here. I mean, like the thing is, I could fake out their Rillaboom. The Rillaboom could obviously fake out Kyogre, but they might be incentivized to glide. I'm leaning towards Fake Out here and then Ice Beam into it as well. Because, well, I guess she's Suicune as Ice Beam and I'm not as Soul Vested here, so maybe I don't love this play. Ugh, and they Fake Out into Kyogre, so I just wasted a Fake Out turn. That's the inherent risk of going for what I did. Okay, they have Scald, but it's not Ice Beam, so they're looking for a Burn here. I'm gonna get Burn. Well, that's what I get for making a suboptimal play. But the, the fear there is if Rillaboom goes just glide into Kyogre, right? And truthfully, if they don't get the burn there, I'll take that trade off any day. So it's like I cover for all plays and the worst case is them going for what they did and then getting the burn. So unfortunately it happened. Um, okay. I think it's still winnable though, especially with Landers in the back. So there's two turns of rain, four turns of grassy terrain, two turn, oh, one turn of tail left on their end. Okay, honestly, if they are... Um... Well, Glide probably knocks out my Kyogre from this range unless they're not max attack. Oh, they're going for Woodhammer, aren't they? Yeah, and you see if I just click Grassy Glide on Suicune last turn, we would've just knocked him out. So we'd've just gotten a free knockout. I should've just gone for that. It's not terrible though, because now you take Recoil, you're gonna Scald again, but now another Glide can just knock out the Suicune and then Sludge Bomb can just knock out their Rillaboom. It really comes down to what their last Pokemon is, I think. I think Glide KO Suicune, it's, it's like a very close, 
damage for oh they're lefties so i think they'll survive it is darn close but i i think it's enough uh yeah i i botched the turn where i clicked fake out in a rilla boom but i don't know like let's say i grassy glide into suicune there Grassy Glide into Suicune. Maybe trading Suicune for Kyogre might honestly have been worth it in this game. Because, like, Kyogre's main value was actually to deal with Eternatus. So, yeah, that was just a suboptimal play. Like, I was like, oh, this play covers for most things. The worst case is what happened. But, realistically, losing Kyogre there to them gliding us wouldn't have been too bad. And if we had actually just gone for the Glide onto Suicune there, because like, they probably weren't expecting Rose Incense, right? So we would have just gotten in the Knockout onto Suicune, where Kyogre's still fully healthy. Uh, okay, last run of rain. Yeah, I think here I'm just gonna go for the Grassy Glide on a Suicune, maybe hope for a higher damage run than just Sludge Bomb into the Rillaboom slot. Maybe just glide into Landorus. It's actually not a 2 KO, so <sighs> I could have doubled up in the Suicune as well. Ah, uh, it's close, but not enough. Yeah, th this one I definitely... Oh, okay, we didn't KO Rillaboom there anyway, so I actually feel a little bit better about that then. But, like, I could have protected Landris there, glided Suicune. Meh. I just wish I could have seen what their last Pokemon was here. I'm super curious. So you can see how important Sight there is to protecting Kyogre in this team, right? Like, I let it. It was actually not bad as a lead either, but we gave it up a little bit too quickly, and it wasn't worth it for us in the end. Uh, Leftovers is also so nice when you have a grassy terrain user. So, yeah, I'm primarily just curious what their fourth was, because I'm thinking it was Ditto. And if it were Ditto, for example, right, and we just knock out the Suicune, we just knock out the Suicune, the turn that they clicked Fake Out into Kyogre, um, we knock out Suicune, they bring in Ditto, it would copy our Kyogre, and then our Rillaboom theoretically would just win, right? So, yeah. That was also close. If, like, I could have doubled up onto Suicune that previous turn as well, so there were multiple uh, opportunities to make better plays in this game. So I'm mainly curious, was the last one Urshifu or Ditto here? I think if it was Urshifu... The end game would have still been pretty shaky, but if it were Ditto, we actually had a real. We, we basically had it won if I had clicked Glide into Sweet that turn rather than making the mistake of clicking Fake Out. And it was Ditto. Uh, what a shame. Yeah, I, I didn't think about the possibility of like us winning the game immediately should Ditto have been their last one. And like the Rose Incense, I just like kind of underestimated here. So this is a like this is a game where the skull burn hurt but truthfully there were two really big turns back to back that i made suboptimal plays on and like i said <laughs> i'm laughing by the way just like three rillabooms out on the field um like i said it's honestly worth it to give up kyogre because kyogre's main value in this game is to knock out eternatus right it's not very good into rillaboom or suicune uh, and my opponent's not going to bring in Cineroar. maybe they have urshifu in the back over ditto but either way um yeah, like Kyogre did its job in this game, so I needed to just be willing to sacrifice it. So this is a game where it's like, yeah, you could look at the Skull Burn, and like, if the Skull Burn doesn't happen, we actually still probably are in a very good spot, uh, because then we can just knock out the Suicune the next turn, and you can't switch Suicune out into Ditto, because if it copies Kyogre, then I also knock that out. Um, but this is a great example of a game where I basically just messed up and didn't think about one turn fully um and like ultimately i don't think the burn really mattered very much the, the reality is that i had a game winning play right in front of me which was clicking grassy glide and so let's think about it reversed right let's say the rillaboom just clicks fake out onto my rillaboom well that's fine then my kyogre can at least get an ice beam or a thunder off in that position i also could have considered switching out the kyogre there into landrance instead i think that's actually a decent consideration as well um and going for fake out onto their rillaboom was just probably the worst possible option i was just like Pretty sure they would click Grassy Glide, but even if they did, we didn't have to care about it. Like, we can give up Kyogre in that spot. So, sometimes you have to be willing to think about when it's worth it to sacrifice Pokemon, and I feel like I normally try to do a decent job of that, but that turn I just didn't fully assess the situation, mainly because I also, like, kind of tunneled on the last one, or, or didn't think very hard about the last one being Ditto and being forced to copy the Kyogre in that position. What also has been interesting is if we both trade a Grassy Glides, I knock out the Suicune, they knock out Kyogre, I bring out Landorus, they bring out Ditto. Well, I suppose in that scenario, then their Ditto just copies my Landorus, and then they can Sludge Bomb my Rillaboom. But my Rillaboom has Protect, my opponent doesn't know that. I guess part of the problem, though, is that Sludge Bomb wasn't actually even a KO until Rillaboom from that position. So, yeah. It was a really close game, ultimately. That one turn was really big, but... Um, turn one, I also could have just gone for Dual Wing... Like, imagine if I actually go for Dual Wing Beam and Ice Beam turn one of the game. We knock out the Eternatus. They probably bring in Rillaboom. Then they pressure with Woodhammer, I guess. Yeah, so it's still kind of scary. Hmm. 
Did I have a better lead? Rillaboom Landris was the lead here, maybe. Well, Landris still gets outsped by Eternatus, but we can survive an attack, presumably. So, yeah. Don't think Whimsicott... Oh, Whimsicott did have Sash. Part of why I didn't want to feel... Uh, feel part of the reason why I didn't feel great about Whimsicott, though, was because uh, Sludge Bomb can poison, so it's like the Endeavor stuff has a little bit less value because it's pretty easy for them. Like, yeah, Sludge Bomb's poison rate is pretty high, so it's like I'm not sure it's worth trading Whimsicott to get Tailwind. When they have Suicune and they can Tailwind, if they get a Poison on a Whimsicott, I essentially lose a Pokemon to match their speed, and my Pokemon are slower anyway, so it essentially feels like I'm giving up a Pokemon for nothing. So, yeah. Um, but that was a game in which I, I feel like I had multiple turns that I could have definitely played a lot better in, and it's a pretty interesting matchup for sure. Um, but uh, uh, hopefully, you know, we got some good action on the site through here today, so huge shoutouts to Ryota for the team. Once again, details in the description below. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed. Don't forget to answer the question of the day, and I'll see you all soon. All right, peace.